Okay, kiddies, here's a tutorial on the first part, about the first half of the linear motion test. I already posted solutions to the math uh, in the intro part in the assignment, so I'm not going to go over that right now. You can ask me in class, or I can meet you outside of class for tut tutoring if you need that. But I'm going to do this for right now. Okay, I got a lot of weird answers for number one. This is not the speed, it's the distance. It's the displacement, it's the displacement, being displaced, moved from, and look, the measurement is in meters. The unit is in meters. So the cat moved from the from the uh, the origin, it was two meters from a thing, and then it was three, and then it stayed, and then it, re and then it, went, it went back like south of, oh yeah, meters north, right? So it was meters, two meters north, and it was three meters north, and then it, was only one meter north and went back toward the object or the the U or whatever the origin point is supposed to be. And I got a bunch of people telling me that it was going slowest uh, out here, but it covers the most ground out here. I don't get it. It's going slowest when it stopped. And number two, where is it at rest? Where it stopped. Number three, acceleration is defined in um, a change of speed or direction, because either one of those is a change of velocity. So when the car's movement is positive and acceleration is positive, then we'll just say maybe that's to the right. It doesn't even matter. You get, like I said, um, what counts for a negative number in physics is kind of up to you a lot of times. And my example was, um, you know, uh, Bella falls out of the chair. She hits the ground. Did she fall? 18 inches positive or did she fall 18 inches negative because it's toward the ground well it's kind of up to you so which way is positive left or right uh maybe to the right anyway so if that's positive and its acceleration is positive what's happening to the car's motion it's getting faster it's accelerating in the same direction it's moving so it's getting faster when it's positive and its acceleration is negative, what's happening to the motion? Well, it's slowing down. Its change is negative, then it's not so positive anymore, right? It's it's uh, somebody's pushing it to the left in a sense. That could be the brakes, of course. What's happening then is not that it's pushing left. Well, yeah, in a sense it is. It's pushing the wheels backward by grabbing them on the rotors. Um, I got a lot of weird answers on this one. This is the, the velocity or it's the speed, really. This doesn't have a direction. And so we do sometimes cheat this idea. People say velocity when they really only mean speed. But OK, plus, look, the unit is in meters per second. So it's the speed. OK, it's the velocity if you want to not be super picky. And I know people talk about muzzle velocity and stuff. Why don't they say muzzle speed? Honestly, I have a big suspicion it's because they want to sound like they they're more technical. There's no difference. Feet per second is the speed. The direction is wherever you point the dumb gun. So technically, the velocity is wherever you point it. Anyway, it illustrates what about the acceleration? How do you know? Well, every second, this uh, he, she, whatever, uh, keeps going one meter faster than the last second. So the acceleration is one meter per second. It changes by one meter every, oh, every two seconds, excuse me, one meter every two seconds. So uh, it's half a meter per one second, and it's constant. How do you know? Well, the velocity increases at a steady pace as a straight line. That's why. So what can we say about the speed, velocity, and acceleration of a ball rising up and then falling in free fall? So all on the way up, right? And then it's at the top and then it's on the way down. So what can we say? The speed is, everybody I think would agree this we, to call this positive. I mean, I guess you could call it negative, but that is just really being weird. So how about we say that the um, the speed, the, oh, excuse me, the speed is uh, decreasing though. There's not, you throw it straight up and what is gravity gonna do? Well, it's not gonna let the ball get away with that. It's gonna slow it down. So on the way up, the speed is decreasing at the top, it's zero, and at the bottom, at, on the way down, excuse me, the speed is increasing, isn't it? So on the way up, the velocity is positive, is positive, 
at the top the velocity is zero like the speed and the and uh, on the way down the velocity is negative now the tricky 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 thing and uh, very few people got this part right is that the acceleration of the ball is negative both times because some people told me that the acceleration was positive but over here when the ball is going up but that would say that the gravity is pushing the ball off the earth no 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 so the gravity is slowing the ball down pulling it downward right as the ball tries to rise off the earth and so the acceleration is toward earth and it's toward earth again so it's negative zero negative which would fall with greater acceleration in a vacuum a leaf or a stone uh neither would be, be greater why is that <clears throat> because there would be no air resistance and gravity tries to uh, accelerate everything at the same rate. And I really thought I gave this example, and I don't know that anybody fed me back what I was looking for. So I got generous about it in case I was the problem here. But give two examples of different masses and explain why it works that way. What normally keeps the leaf falling more slowly? So what I thought I said, and what I mean now is, and I said it actually back in the uh, other test, the fundamentals of science, that if you have uh, two blocks and one of them is twice as heavy as the other one, let's say this one is, this one, is uh, one kilogram and this is two kilograms. So do they fall at the same rate? Yes, they do, ignoring wind resistance. So give an example of two different masses. So you could just have anything, really. But it's just, this is a good example. Explain why it works that way. Because with more mass, there is a greater force. And you know what? I'm explaining this. I want people to explain it out like this. So let's do that. So if the mass goes up, the force goes up. And so then people say, well, you know, if the force goes up, it should, you know, should fall faster. There's a greater gravitational force. Um, yeah, but that's not the way it works because notice if you multiply this by two, you get this. This has to multiply by two, but A is a constant. The acceleration from gravity is a constant. And here's the, what the concept that I want to point out. This is twice as massive and it has twice the force from gravity, but it also has twice the inertia. It's twice as hard to push around or pull around or whatever you want to say from gravity. It's twice as hard to get started and it's twice as hard to speed up. So the, it takes twice as much force just to do the same job. And so everything tries to fall at the same rate. And I showed you the ostrich feather and the bowling ball in that giant NASA vacuum pumped room. Ball thrown upward and caught when it comes back down. Speed of the ball when caught would be what if we ignore wind resistance? Uh, it would be the same. In real life, would the ball come back down faster or slower? You know what? I got really loose with grading this one because I had a thought. Um, it really depends on how you throw it. So this is kind of unfair. So I'm kind of striking this one, but I'm going to explain it anyway. If you throw it normal person, then it, it comes back um, about, the, about the same, but, but probably a little slower. Um, because it's not be able to punch through the wind as much, I think, on the way down. And um, also, if we got some like, you know, super tennis ball launcher that was like actually dangerous, like we've got to make a make making a bullet out of a tennis ball. OK, it's it's coming out at 100 miles an hour. Nobody get near it. We point it straight up in the air. We fire that sucker off. OK, it's going to leave the tube. You know, at 100 miles an hour, it's not going to fall back to earth at 100 miles an hour because the wind resistance is going to be way too high. The ball's never going to get to 100. In fact, um, it's not going to be that bad at all for a tennis ball. It's not that light. It's not the, that hard for the wind to resist it. In fact, there's an old story about a baseball catcher, uh, you know, in the major leagues who took on a, a dare to catch a baseball thrown out of the Washington Monument at the top. And he almost did it. I mean, it was, it was kind of dangerous, but, you know, it just, it wasn't going to kill anybody. 
a tennis ball not even tennis ball you would i mean i'd wear goggles and that's about it just i don't want to get my eye poked out it's not going to be that bad it's too light it's the wind resistance is too high for its mass we kind of answered this up uh here 10 a ball is thrown straight up at the top of its path its instantaneous speed is zero and the acceleration is zero. If, if it's having speed, then it's, it's not changing its speed uh, or direction if it has no speed. So the acceleration is zero. Almost no one got this right. I'm saying if you have a graph and you have some curve, ooh, right? And you want to find the, the rate of change. Uh, I'm going to change that. You want to find the uh, instantaneous velocity. Well, the velocity is changing, right? So if I want to find the, the velocity here, what I could do to get a pretty good idea without calculus and stuff like this, um, I could get a, a ruler and draw a straight line that just barely ticks that point, And that's a tangent line. So I could take a tangent line at that point on the graph that I want to talk about at the given point and find the slope of that line. I don't think anybody got this right. 13, a man on a bicycle travels at a constant speed in the positive direction for a short time. He then stops for a short rest before returning back to his starting point at the same constant speed that he originally moved. Sketch a distance time and a velocity time. Oh, velocity time there we go graph to represent this motion so he starts out at no distance away from his origin right he travels at a constant speed he's getting farther and farther and farther at some rate he takes a rest for some time i don't care but what does his distance do during that time it doesn't change right over the time and then he returns at the same rate at the same slope but negative the same inverse slope as he took off at so this is the distance versus time now his velocity time, he starts at no speed, right? And then he has to accelerate. And then, and then once he reaches his intended speed, his velocity doesn't change. And then he stops, but he can't come to an instantaneous stop, right? Nothing comes to an instantaneous stop technically. Um, so he has to slow down and then he rests and his velocity over this time period. And I realized that this gap should look as big as this gap, but that was not my point. Um, uh, this space here should be this space here, the same width, but anyway, while he's resting, his velocity is zero. Then he takes off again, he gets up to speed, he maintains the same speed, and then he slows down as he hits the origin point again. Um, almost nobody gave me what I really wanted in 14. So I got a little generous on it, but uh, people just said you're like uh, the, well, I think, the most popular answer was that you're rotating on Earth. Yeah, okay. But you're rotating uh, on Earth. The Earth is orbiting the sun. And the sun is taking, I forget. I just saw this figure. It's seriously like hundreds of thousands of years or something to go around the galaxy. The answer is a long, stupid time, whatever it is. Anyway, how do those things count as accelerations? Well, your speeds aren't changing, but your direction is. So all of those count as accelerations. And I'm going to go look that up. Um, we're going around the center of the galaxy at about 490,000 miles an hour. Now I... What I want is the orbit time around the center. Hold on. Oh, excuse the heck out of me. Sorry, 230 million years to go around the center of the galaxy. So the answer is forget it. That's isn't that beyond the origin of the dinosaurs, for God's sake? It's a big, stupid galaxy is what it is, at least by human standards. This is velocity equals distance over time. Distance equals initial velocity times time. 
plus one half of acceleration times time squared, only the time is squared. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Distance equals one half of acceleration times time squared. And final velocity uh, is a average acceleration to be picky. I guess all those are all ex average acceleration, but anyway, acceleration times time. 